the Sin on Down Turn Up the Volume. You're listening to the High School Fan Zone on Double T 97.3 and the Double T 97.3 mobile app as well. Thank you for making us part of your Tuesday evening. Already a, a Tuesday evening. Another short week here for the Monterey Plainsman. And then we are here with Coach Wayne Hutchinson, the head coach of Monterey. Coach, uh, how's it going today? Going good. Going good. Team morale high still? Uh, it's, it's, it's as good as it can be expected. You know, I... Obviously, I had a heartbreaker uh, last Thursday night, and uh, now now it's just one of uh, getting putting that behind us and moving on and uh, getting back into the routine of practice. But I thought our kids did a good job yesterday. You know, with the with the holiday, uh, we we got to practice at ten a.m. and went to twelve uh, twelve o'clock noon, and uh, kids did a good job of responding and and trying to be focused and practice. And then they they followed it up uh, again with a good practice today. So it, it's going good. Talking with Coach Hutchinson. If you have a question for Coach Hutch, the Slonsky's text line always open. Give us a text, 75044. If you have a question regarding last week's game or this upcoming game against the Abilene Wiley Bulldogs, we'll get into that much more here in just a few moments. But going back to last Thursday, a 28-24 to loss over the Odessa High Broncos for the Monterey Plains when they played that on Thursday of last week. Um, and I know playing on Thursday a little bit different. A lot of going on last week, first week of school, everybody coming back. Do you think that had anything to do with uh, your team's, I don't want to say performance, but just kind of, you know, were they juiced up a little too much before the game? Could you see it in, in warm-ups or something like that? No, I don't think it affected us. I mean, I, I could sit here and make excuses all day long and, and blame it on that, but it, we, we have nobody but ourselves to blame. Um, you know, it, it, we just got to get back in the routine. Just, you know, school started that, you know, you have to adjust. And and that's one thing, you know, when you have a mature ball club, sometimes that you can overcome that. We we're, we're still young. We we learned a lot from that ball game on Thursday night. But uh, again, uh, we had the ball game in control and uh, in and had it in our hands, and we let it slip away. We'll get to the breakdown here of this game in just a few moments as well. Again, the Monterey Plainsmen lose twenty eight to twenty four, but a lot of football left to play, including a uh, week two opponent against the Abilene Wiley. Bulldogs. I know early on you said you know you wanted to, when when the lights shine on Friday night, and I know, I know y'all play Thursday, but whenever it comes down to playing under the Friday night lights, you wanted to see how your your team reacted. Uh, did you did you see what you wanted to see? Yeah, I felt like we you know I, th- I thought we responded really well in some areas, and then you know obviously the special teams uh, we ha- we have a ways to go, and and we had a lot of kids on our special teams that had never played in a in a Friday night game, and and it showed. Uh, and so now we have to go back to the drawing board. We have to make some adjustments uh, and and figure out who can and who can't in those positions. And, and we and we have addressed that. And and we've had some well, really two good sessions in our special teams this week. So we think we got some things fixed. So uh, that's just a matter of continue playing on Friday night and see if we can get better. Odessa, how we mentioned last week, Odessa being zero and ten last year, they hadn't won in in fifteen straight ball games. So you knew they they were coming in hungry. They 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 wanted to win that game. We mentioned last week head coach Danny Servants, who you're familiar with because he was at Estacado uh, uh, several years ago, or a few years ago now. Um, did, was there a sense of you guys just looking past past the Broncos? I, you know, you can say that, and and maybe there was a little bit in the in the back of our kids' mind. You know, you can tell them all all week long about hey, you better be ready. They're going to be hungry, but they're going to come to play. You know, and you can say that is, until you're blue in the face, and sometimes it doesn't sink in until, you know, reality sets in. So I, I bet you they'd believe me now. But uh, I knew they were going to be a tough football team coming in just because of what uh, they had on their sub-varsities last year. They had some really good-looking kids, some really good athletes. And, you know, Danny was a new coach coming in. It takes a little while to get, get your system in place and figure out where kids need to go to help your football team be successful. And I thought they did a tremendous job of getting their kids – you know, I felt like he had them in the right place. They they suited up well. They were some big kids, and he had some guys that were in that were athletic in athletic positions, and and they made plays. And uh, so, I knew what we were up against. I knew they were going to be hungry. Uh, and uh, again, you know, we had the game. I thought we did what we needed to do to win the game up until the last six seven minutes of the ball game, and and we just let it slip away. And you know, when when the momentum switches like it did, uh, it's kind of like you're sitting there. And you can't you, you can't stop it. And uh, even after that, we had a chance. All we had to do is you know punt the ball away. But a lot of things happened in the game before that last snap even happened. Uh, we shouldn't have ever been in that position. And and hopefully we'll learn from it and and grow up and be able to play into those Friday nights and not make those same mistakes. Seven five zero four four. The number of the Schlonsky's text line. If you have a question here for Coach Hutchinson, and I mentioned earlier, it is a long season. 
So how do you, as a coaching staff, get this team to put that behind you and not only look forward to week two, but also what else is ahead for the Plainsmen? Hey, it is what it is. You got to put it behind you. You can't dwell on, on what we did last week. Uh, you got to take each week, uh, uh, just like this week, we, we're going to play the number nine team in the state of Texas in 4A football. And we got to be ready this week. And if we're if we're looking back and and on what happened last week, then you can't prepare mentally and, and play a good team like the Abilene Wileys. And that's one thing that we've talked to our team about this this week is we have some guys that are coming up from JV that just haven't figured out how important it is to be locked in and practice, to be mentally focused, and, and making sure that we're playing with some urgency in practice so that when we get to that Friday night game, when it speeds up, uh, we don't have to think. We just have to react. And that's something that I've stressed yesterday and today. And I think our kids have, have picked up their intensity in practice. I think their their focus is a lot better. And, and you know, we talk about, you know, it's, it's not only on the practice field, but away from the practice field. Are you, are you, are you getting enough rest? Are you drinking, and drinking enough fluids? Are you eating, eating right? And then are you watching that film on a daily basis and making sure that you're mentally ready so that you can play at a high level on Friday night? So that's what we're trying to get to. And we're going to put that game in the past, and we're going to look forward. We're going to focus on us and try to fix the areas that, that I know are fixable. Um, and one thing I've told our kids this week was first thing I did is I flipped the film on, and I just looked on both sides of the ball, and I looked for loafers. I looked for guys that are taking off on plays, guys that if – they had a chance to go make a tackle or had a chance to go make a block. And if they turned it down, then I was going to get worried. But I couldn't find that. Uh, I saw that our kids played with a lot of effort. They played with intensity. It's just some of the little things in football, fundamental things that you got to get fixed to be a championship football team. And, you know, and that's what we're going to try to work on. We'll move on from Honor Ray. Obviously a, a tough loss last week against the Odessa Broncos, but a lot of positive things as well. A guy like Trey Manahan kind of having a, a nice game uh, as a wide receiver for the Plainsman. We'll talk about that. We'll also break down some more of the scoring series from this game and then also look forward to the Abilene Wiley Bulldogs coming up on a Friday night. It's the high school fans on the Plainsman fans and with Coach Hutchinson on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3 dot com. Get your day started the right way. The Morning Drive, weekday mornings at 6 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. Get the latest scores and updates from Monterey Athletics. Just text Plainsman to 75044 and receive the latest news from Double T 97.3. Now, the Plainsman Fan Zone on Double T 97.3. It's the Plainsman Fan Zone here on Double T 97.3 and the Double T 97.3 mobile app. My name is Andres Flores. We are here with Coach Wayne Hutchinson of the Monterey Plainsman, the head football coach. Uh, yesterday was Labor Day, of course. Uh, were you able to get your team a uh, you know, little bit of a day off, half a day off, I guess, a little bit of rest for them? Yeah, we came in at 10, got finished at noon. So uh, they got to sleep in a little bit. And then, you know, in the afternoon, they, they got a, at least a half a day off. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm and for sure you guys I, as a coaching staff, were you guys able to take advantage of the, the half day? Somewhat. I mean, we did, did get a few hours off, and, and, it, and it was nice. Uh, it uh, definitely lets you relax a little bit. If you got a text a question for Coach uh, Hutch, leave us a text message here on the Shlonsky's text line, 75044. We'll get to those here in just a minute. Do want to kind of break down the, uh, the Odessa high game uh, real quickly. Again, the play has been fall in the first game of the year, 28-24 to over the uh, Odessa high Broncos. And, Coach, in the first half, uh, really the first opening kickoff, you guys kind of came out and exploded with a nice 47-yard return, but the Plainsmen were not able to uh, capitalize on that offensively. Yeah, we started the game off just exactly like we wanted to, and then we got good field position, so we were going to take a shot deep early. We got sacked. Uh, then we tried to to go back to our run game, established that on second down, I believe it was, and then on third down, we tried to run it again, and they blitzed into it and guessed right, and uh, so now it's uh, you know fourth down had the option of uh, maybe kicking a field goal or going for it. So early in the game, I felt like, hey, let's try to play some field position here and and see if we can, you know, pin them and uh, win the fin- uh, field position battle. And, uh, uh, you know, and that that was the thought process on that. Odessa High started the scoring uh, late in the first quarter, a Josh Lauer five-yard touchdown run with about 442 remaining in the uh, first quarter to take a 7 nothing lead 
but the Plainsmen did not panic because in the second quarter, Briley Alexander hit a 41-yard field goal to put the Plainsmen on the board. How comfortable are you with uh, your your field goal kicker, Alexander? I, I, I at least know his range now, and uh, I don't think I would. Uh, if I had it over to do again, we might have tried that field goal on the first possession. Um, uh, he obviously has a strong leg and and did a tremendous job on all the kickoffs. Uh, I think we had a touchback on every kickoff, which is a great weapon. And uh, you know, and and he's going to continue to get better as punting. I've seen him in practice when he catches it. It'll, I mean, he can boot it sixty five, seventy yards and turn it over. Uh, it's just something he's going to have to continue to work on, and, and he's going to be a weapon in that, that area of uh, of the kicking game as well. Plainsmen take the lead late in the second quarter. A Demetrius Lacey one-yard touchdown run to put the Plainsmen up 10-7 to in the second quarter. A little bit of a, you know, a late kind of a slow start for the offense there. Uh, was that a concern here for the Plainsmen or just first game jitters? Yeah, I mean, uh, they did a good job of, of taking away what we did do best, and, and I didn't feel like we ever got in a rhythm offensively uh, until uh, I'm not sure exactly when it was in the game, but we, we marched it about 70 yards in about five plays really quick uh, and showed what we're capable of, capable of as far as being an explosive offense. And and then it just seemed like through the game, uh, of course, we're trying to establish that run. We feel like that's a strength, and they were taking the things that we do away, and you got to give their coaching staff a lot of credit. Uh, our kids learned a lot from it, uh, and that's part of being a little bit young is uh, you have to be able to adjust, and and that's something we're going to grow into where we can just adjust on the fly. Uh, we didn't do a very good job of that uh, Thursday night, and that falls on us as coaching staff. But we, we have done a lot of uh, revamping in the last couple of days, and and we feel like if uh, you know, we feel like we can adjust to anything, and hopefully we can get that across to our kids. So because it still comes down to ex- execution, and honestly, that's what we focused on these last two days and over the weekend. We just focused on us. Where can we make us better? What do we need to do to make those runs that we're so good at, or we feel like we're going to be good at? How can we make them better? And it and it comes down to angles. It comes down to fits. It comes down to recognizing the defensive fronts and. And adjusting, and and so that's what we've been working on, and I feel real good about it. Our kids have responded, and and uh, hopefully we can get our rhythm back on offense, move the chains, and uh, I think once we start moving those chains, then we can kind of open our offense up like we we want to, and that's being able to throw and run, uh, you know, equally on 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 both of those phases of the game. Plainsmen have a halftime lead with a score of ten to seven in the third quarter. Another seven yard touchdown run by Lacey. To put the uh, Plainsmen up 17 to seven, and then the fourth quarter started. Trey Manahan had a 54-yard touchdown pass from Brylin Lawson Young. When we come back, I do want to ask you about those two guys, uh, sure. Lawson Young and Trey Manahan. They both had big games for the first time uh, in 2007. And then we'll preview the Abilene Wiley Bulldogs. That's the next game for the Plainsmen coming up on Friday night. It's the high school fan zone. It's the Plainsmen fan zone. It's Flores. It's Hutchison. It's you on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. The day's first look at the world of sports. The Morning Drive, weekdays at 6 on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. Bringing you the sports you love, Double T 97.3. It's the Plainsman Fan Zone on Double T 97.3. I'm the best Florida's here with Coach Hutch of Monterey. And we're breaking down the last week's game against the Odessa Broncos. We come to the fourth quarter. Again, Trey Manahan has a 54-yard touchdown pass from Brylin Lawson Young on the night. Manahan, five catches for 154 yards. Coach, how do you feel the, or how do you think he exce- assessed his performance uh, last Thursday night, Trey? Uh, his performance was spot on. He, he, he did exactly what we were hoping he could do that we've always thought he was capable of doing because, you know, we moved him from running back to the wide receiver and, and mainly because if you can get the ball in his hands in, in space, he, he's unbelievable without making people miss. But he's he has developed a knack. He, I mean, he's turned into a really good receiver. He runs really good routes. He's figured it out. And now he's able to to put a little little uh, head nod on you, a little flavor in his, in his stick as a receiver, and he can get – 
stretch the field vertically and he in in two different times i mean he stretched it vertically and he's not scared to come in on a slant pass and and he made some good catches in traffic and uh it's going to pay big dividends for us offensively cuz now all of a sudden defenses have have to respect him they got to take another guy out of the box which you know is going to open up that running game and vice versa once the running game starts uh clicking which it will uh, then uh, our passing game will, will happen. And we got other weapons with Xavier White. I mean, uh, he just showed glimpses of what he's capable of doing, but he's very explosive. Darian Smith has been great in practice but didn't get any touches uh, Thursday night. And then Zyron Johnson, I thought, played really well too. Uh, you know, anytime we can get a, a quick screen out there to him, I mean, he, he caught several screens and was uh, showed signs of being very explosive too. So, you know, we're, we're – we still got some good things that can happen to us. Uh, we just have to stay positive. We got to continue to get better and continue to work. And and I think you'll see. And once we get our rhythm, I think you'll see some explosiveness out of those guys. The Odessa High Broncos, or the Plainsmen at the time, were leading twenty-four to seven. The Broncos scored two unanswered touchdowns, and the Plainsmen led twenty-four to was it twenty-four to twenty-one? And it came down to uh, with about six seconds left to go. The Plainsmen with an opportunity to punt the ball. Coach, have you taken time to thought? Would you have played it differently in that last sequence uh, right there in the ball game? Well, like I said before, it shouldn't ever came down to that. We had the ball, we had the game in control. We lost some possessions because we we had a we had a penalty on third down and twenty two, gave them a first down. They capitalized and scored and on the ensuing kickoff. We we muff it, give them the give them the ball back again. And had we just got if we had just gotten some uh, an offensive possession in either two of those scenarios, we I feel like the game would have been out of reach and it would have never came down to that last punt. But speaking of that punt, I wouldn't have done it any different. Uh, I mean, the thought of snapping the ball out of the end zone, the thought of just snapping it to the punter and running out of the back of the end zone crossed my mind, ball is on like 19. You know, that's 20 yards, you know. So I, I thought the best scenario – Catch it, punt it out of bounds, don't give them a chance to return it, and then put your defense out there and see if they can uh, fight them off in the last few seconds of the ball game. And, uh, you know, unfortunately it didn't work out for us. And, again, uh, we're not going to dwell on that. We're going to put it in the past. We're going to stay positive. We're going to love on our kids even more now and see if we can't rebound. And it's like I told our kids this coming week against Abilene Wiley, what a great opportunity to get to play the number nine team in the state of Texas and show everybody what you're capable of, and that's the that's the approach that we're going to take. It will be against the Abilene Wiley Bulldogs this Friday night at 7:30 at Abilene. Uh, last year, of course, they go 12 and two, four no four no in their district, and actually play for a state championship last year in 4A. What do you know about the uh, the Bulldogs coming in, and how are you guys kind of gonna gonna challenge them this this week? Well, we had the opportunity to scout them on Friday night. They're a very very disciplined ball club. They've got a very good quarterback that's accurate, and he's got some good wheels under him. So if you flush him out of the pocket, he can definitely hurt you. And their running back is extremely fast, so we're going to have to do a really good job of bottling him up. He's also their kickoff returner, punt returner. So, again, those special teams have got to be huge this Friday night. They're very multiple on offense. We're going to have to play very disciplined. They're very multiple on defense. They're going to throw two different fronts at us. They're going to come at you with every blitz imaginable, and they're very good at it. They don't make mistakes, and that's a tribute to Coach Sandifer, who's been there for about 35, 40 years, and he's kept all of his staff. It's amazing that they've all stayed together for that long, so you know they're well coached. They know how every every adjustment known to man, you know they know immediately how to make it. So, again, we're going to have to play one of the best games that we've played and we're going to have to be very disciplined and we're going to have to match them mentally and then I feel like though that we match up good offensive line and defensive line as far as our size versus their size so that's going to be an advantage to us so as long as we can match them mentally uh, and not make any mistakes I feel good about our chances. Is, uh, do you challenge your team do you put it in their head that, that they played for a state championship that they went far in the playoffs I know you guys went three rounds last week but I mean excuse me last year but do you kind of challenge them in that way? Oh, yeah, we've talked about it. I was like, hey, this is the same team that we played last year. And guess what? They played for a state championship, and one of their losses was to us. Mm -hmm. And so there's no reason why this year uh, that same scenario can't happen. Monterey beat them 37-23 to last year, the first time on the road for uh, the Plainsmen this year. Is there any challenges there? Uh, is your team a good traveling team? Well, I guess we're going to find out. This is our first, first traveling with this team. 
uh, you know, in every year, uh, the team team is different. The team chemistry is different. So you're going to learn a lot about your team. So this is another great opportunity to see what they're about. It's a 7:30 kickoff at Abilene Wiley for the Monterey Plainsmen this week, looking to get their first win of the 2017 season for Monterey. Coach, appreciate the time as always. Uh, good luck this week, and let's let's go get a win. You bet. Thank you. That's Coach Hutch from the Monterey Plainsmen football team for joining us. Coming up next, Lubbock High's Jason Strunk. We'll step into the Aim Bank studio for the Westerner Fan Zone on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. The bottom line, your midday sports break. Weekdays at 11 on Double T 97.3.